Enums are one of the least understood parts of VBA and yet they are simple to use and can make a huge difference to your code in terms of readability and maintenance. In this video, I'm going to show you why they are so powerful and how you can easily use them to improve your own applications. Enums are variables that allow us to represent items as words instead of numbers, making them much easier to read and understand. These are some examples of the different types of enums that we can have in our applications. If enums didn't exist, then we typically write code like this, where we're using numbers to represent the item that we want. So you can see in this case, what we have is one represents France and two represents the UK, but this doesn't make our code that readable. If we pass the country type to a sub or a function, you can see that it's not readable either as we're passing a number and this number could mean anything. Enums are not only more readable, they also allow us to take advantage of the IntelliSense. Now VBA also has loads of built-in enums that you may have used in the past. And you can see here for pay special that it's got a list of all the different options that we can pass as a parameter. The fact we're using plain English instead of numbers makes it very easy to understand what each of them represents. If these were just numbers, then we'd have to look up the number and find a reference for it. So at a glance, we can see exactly what our code is doing. Now if we right click here and select definition or shift F2, you can see that it has a list of all members of Excel pays type. So this is very useful sometimes if you want to see the members. Now VBA has many different enum types and you can see them all on the left here. They're the ones that start with Excel. So for example, another one we have is Excel window state. And you can see here that the state of the window can be maximized, minimized, or normal. And we can use this within the Excel application to set the window. So again, it makes it much more readable than if it was just numbers that we were using. To create an enum, type enum and the name that you want to give it. Now I normally put an E before the name to prevent conflicts with other variables. And once we have that line in, what we do is we add our members line by line. So I'm gonna have USA on line one, France on line two, UK on line three, and so on. And then when we're finished with our list, what we do is we type end enum and this terminates the enumerator. So this is the enums created for our project. So I'm gonna use this simple sub just to demonstrate how the numbering works. Now, when I type e country, you can see that the IntelliSense brings us up a list of the members, and this is very useful. Now I'm selecting USA. So if we run this code, what you'll see is that USA will print out the value zero. And that's because by default, the first item is zero. Now, if I go and I print out France, you'll see that France is one. And this is because VBA adds one to the value of each successive member. So you can see that UK is two. And if we try China, China will be four. Now, if we set USA to five and we run the code, you'll see that it has the value five. But this means now that the value of France is six. Now, if we change the value of Australia to 100, what this means is that China will now be 101. And you can see that when we run the code, it prints out 101 for China. So this is how the numbering system works for enums. Now, typically we use the default values for enums, but it's worth knowing this because in some cases we might want to set different values. By default, the enum is public. And what this means is that it's available to all the modules in our project. If we use the private keyword, then this means it's just available to the current module. And this is how most declarations work in VBA. Now that we've created our enum, this is how we're going to use it. So we declare country as an e, as e country. You can see that it appeared in the IntelliSense. And when we say country equals, you can see that it gives us all the options for this enum, which is really useful. So we pick Australia and then we can say, if country, for example, is equal to China, and you can see again, when we put in the equals, we get the list of items. So in this case, we can say, if it equals China, let's do something else, if it equals to Australia and so on. When you see Australia in the code or China, it may not be that obvious what it is or what we're dealing with, but what we can do is we can put e country before it, and this will make it clear what it is. But the problem is it kind of makes our code a little bit bloated to have e country everywhere. So what I tend to do is 
to put a simple prefix like EC, which is for enum country, before it. And then when we write it in our code, it's obvious that when we're looking at Australia, that it's an enum. And this is how it works in Excel as well. Typically in Excel, the enums start with the prefix XL. So when we look at the code now, you can see, okay, we know that we're dealing with an enum and we don't have to look any further. Let's look at an example of using an enum. So imagine we want to create a function that calculates tax based on a particular country. So we could create the function something like this. We select the case based on the country that we want to tax for, and then with our case statement, we perform the calculation. So very simple. Now, how we use this function is like this. So let's have a simple example of code that we call this function. Now, in this case, you can see I'm not using enums. And what you can see is that the numbers make it kind of confusing. Unless we put in comments to specify what exactly country we were dealing with, it doesn't make the code that readable. Now, if we change this parameter from long to e country, and then let's delete what we have here. When we place the comma back again, you can see that the IntelliSense gives us a list of options. And this is really useful. Not only does it show us what's available, but it means that it's much less likely that we'll pick an invalid parameter. And now we can update all the cases here so that they're more readable. And you can see now that it's very obvious that EC USA, EC France, EC UK, very obvious which country that we're dealing with. So very simple to implement, but makes a lot of difference in our code. Now, typically in a case statement like this, we'd also have a case else. And this ensures that we catch any invalid types. So this is a very simple example of how we can use the enum in our code. What's recommended when we are declaring an enum is that we have one that represents none. We typically use zero as the value because often zero is returned when a function fails. Now we can also use this value zero and we can compare this value so that we know if the value had been set in the first place. What we can do then is we can compare status and make sure that it was set. So we could say if status equals none, then it hasn't been set. And this is quite useful. If we want to read through all the items in our enum, what we can do is we can add invisible members to make this easy. So how we do it is like this. We use square brackets and then we put in the first item. I'm going to say first here. And it's going to be set to zero by default. So it's going to be the same as ES none. And then I'm going to put in the last item. Now the last item is going to be ES complete plus one. But all we have to do in our for loop then is we just go from last minus one. So we say for status equals E status. And you see they don't appear in our list, which is good because we don't want to see them most of the time. And then we say from first to last. And that's minus one because we're not including last. And then we do debug print and simply print out the status. And this will print out the values of every member of our enum. When we run the code, you can see that it prints out all the values for the members of our enum. And this can be very useful indeed. One really useful application of enums is when we're writing out to different columns. So we can use the enums as the column ID. And this is very useful for a number of reasons. But first of all, it allows us to easily see in the code which column we're writing to. So it makes our code very readable. Now, a second big advantage is, imagine you decide that you want to insert some columns. So now you want the first column to start at position five rather than position one. Well, you just simply change first to be five in our enum and then all the columns will automatically update. So that's the only change we need to make in our code. And if you think about it, if we were just using hard numbers like one, two, three, then we'd have to update everything in our code. Now, along the same lines, another thing we might have to do, and it's very common, is that we might have to insert a column somewhere. So we might decide we want to have an extra column. And to do this with enums is very simple. We just simply insert the enum to represent that column. So for example, here we're putting in payment method, and this will automatically update the number of all the columns that come after payment method. So our code will still work exactly the same by just making this one change. If you would like to check out another powerful VBA technique, then check out the video on the screen. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please click on the like button and let me know in the comments below if you've used enums before or if you plan to use them in the future.